Easter Monday clash between Altrincham and Gateshead. It's finished uh, in favour of the Tynesiders by a goal to nil. Uh, former Altrincham player Marcus Dinanga with the goal. Phil Parkinson, the Altrincham manager, joins us. Phil, um, <laughs> we certainly didn't start the game that uh, the, the the way you, you planned it. I thought first ten minutes we, we were a little bit disjointed, but then we've got two new centre halves playing together there, so maybe there was an element of that. And the way Gates said play, they like to dominate the ball, and we, we, we slightly adjusted our press and our shape. And again, I think it just took a little bit of adjusting and the understanding of the intensity that they had to get after it. And once they got that, I thought there was. The, the lads were superb. I thought the performance they put in today was top draw. So, um, where I was, I was really disappointed with the performance um, against Oldham. That was a brilliant performance, and the dice hasn't rolled for us there, has it? Um, and sometimes that happens. And I've said it far too many times in front of you this season, where we've had a, a for me, a really strong performance there against one of the inter informed teams in the division. Forget where they are in the table. We've been there ourselves, where we've been stuck in a, a low-level position for a period of time. They're the informed team and I've not seen anybody do that to them in recent weeks. They, they've not been able to play the normal game. We pressed them ever so well and we, the chances we created, we could have won three games. Oli Burns made four terrific saves in the game, kept us in it early, early on and um, two, two or three top-notch uh, saves. I'd argue the point there, keepers definitely kept them in the game to be honest. So Oli's made a couple of good saves, I don't, I don't remember there being four but um, there was definitely a couple of really good saves. Second half, I don't think I remember him making a save, whereas their keeper has carried on his fine form into the second half. And as I said, the, the chances that we created, we should be putting them to bed. But that's where we are at the moment in terms of this developing group. I understand that. It's, I'm as frustrated as every fan watching that. A, they'll know as well they've been let off the hook there. They'll look at it as a great away performance for them, but that's not what they're all about. They want to dictate play a bit like ourselves and create lots of chances. They didn't really open us up. Marx's was the only real clear-cut chance. And he's been scoring them, and I think that probably is what stings a little bit that Marcus has scored. But Marx was a really good player. He, he was just wasn't clinical enough for us, and he's showing that he's he's got that ability for them. Um, so sometimes you have to move clubs to find your feet again, and it's worked for Marcus. Um, and that can be difficult to take when you lose that forward and we've missed all them chances. But um, I really believe in the lads that we've got in them positions and I know they're going to come ever so strong next season. Lewis Baines was, was injured today, but uh, you weren't able to play uh, Aaron Bennett or Luke Burgess because uh, of the five uh, lone player limit. So uh, that, that, that's pretty unfortunate. <laughs> It is, and as helpful as it's been, it's hindered us a little bit if you lose permanent players um, because we want to be able to select people like Aaron and Luke and rotate some of the other lone lads. And we'll certainly try and do that going into the last couple of games. But ultimately, I've got a points tally that I want us to hit. I'll keep putting out the strongest team that I feel is available for that particular game. So that doesn't mean Luke and Aaron won't feature in terms of in the strongest teams. But when we're playing an in-possession team, like Gates said, and we wanted to press the way we did. We needed the lads with the athleticism and the energy. And and it's almost paid off for us. It's just really unfortunate that we've, we've been on the receiving end of um, the goal in the first half and not being able to take our chances. Joe Hugo's had a, a fantastic chance in the first half, a really good move in, in which he made a sublime uh, flick to, to uh, lay the ball on to, to Regan Linney. It was a fantastic uh, move and it, it was a bad miss, but it, it was just a little bit too far behind him, I think. Yeah, it was. Um, and like I said, we've had a number of really good opportunities. And, and I've just spoke to the forwards in there. I've asked them to be a threat. They were. We weren't We weren't passive. We were very aggressive in everything we did. They're going to get out at times in terms of through a press. If we could get it right every single time and, and they could never get out, then it's the perfect day. But they're going to get out at times. But when we did pinch it high up the pitch, the chances we created were really, really top draw, and we, we, we've got to be got to be more clinical and more cutthroat in in that area of the pitch. And they've shown that they're the capable of that. But there's some young lads in there. You look at Regan; he was playing MPL for the last couple of seasons, so the opportunities he, he'd probably have three of those and finish one. Now he's, he's he'll get three. He's, he's got to be finishing them. So. Um, it's not just Regan as well, Joe Hoogle, that, that'll be his learning curve at United. So probably the opportunities he gets, he probably has a little bit more time to finish. You're not going to get that time against these types of players. And Tyrese, that's probably the best game I think Tyrese has had for us. I thought he was a real menace. He, great energy levels. 
decent end products, always want a little bit more, but he, he, he put some balls in there that, again, we're begging to be finished, so full credit to Tyrese for that. And it's just a story of us not taking a chance today and a great goalkeeping display from from uh, their keeper. So, hey, Gates said, as I said, banging form at the moment, and um, we're just really disappointed that we, we couldn't take something from that game. The delivery from uh, Tyrese on the two chances for Regan Linney in the, in the second half was, was, was perfection. Yep, like I said to you, the chances that we created were needed to be put away. Unfortunately, we weren't quite there to be able to do that today. It just wasn't our day for our forwards to, to bury them. But in the same breath, their keepers had a great game. So where you're saying Ollie in the first half, their keepers done it throughout the game because he's had to. Ollie's not been put under that much pressure. They've had a couple of break breakaways, but we've dealt with it quite well. Um, and again, you can just sit back and hope you get a counter-attack. We didn't. We took the game to them all the way through. And I'm sure all the fans can see that as well. It's For me, everyone will be delighted with the Oldham game and I certainly was to take something from it, but I was disgusted, disappointed, upset with the performance, if I'm perfectly frank with you, but sometimes that's how football works. You, you, you put in a performance and you don't always get what you... Your performance dictates you should do, and and, and that's the that's the turning point, the learning curve. If we want to go on to push for players with a young group like this, then we we've got to be more cutthroat, and they've got to learn that. And if they don't, they'll either stay at this level or or drop down. Or and if they do get it, we've it'll be the age-old saying, and what we've seen all ever since I've been here is lads will kick on and go to higher levels because the standard of football and what they're producing is is exceptional at times. And it wasn't about the in-possession stuff. I was so delighted with the press as you could tell from the way we set up the way they were able to execute it bar 10 minutes probably in the first half at the start as you said and probably in the second half we they were the only the only times where we didn't quite get it right but in general I thought they were outstanding nine yellow cards in the game for me at least two-thirds of those were very very marginal yeah I mean they gonna make it about referees again aren't we but very lucky is it story he's lucky he stayed on the pitch there if the ref it, max he's been honest we're trying to tell our lads to stay on the feet he slows down the attack which is great defending from his viewpoint he's delayed he's he's not allowed our attack attack to get away and we've got to do better when we break through but the ref just got to blow his whistle and he's it's a sending off there but we i don't want to be relying on that um there was a deliberate hand ball that he missed um because he's saying it's not um a promising attack. The lads stopped an attack down the side, so it's just disappointing. But listen, overall, we can't rely on officials. We all know that. We've got to make sure we control our own destiny, and we did enough to do that. The lads are devastated in there. I certainly am as well. And as I said, I'm sick and tired of coming in front of you saying we haven't got what we deserve. The only way we're going to do that is by improving our quality, um, because what we're here to do is, is set a team up to create chances, to be really difficult to beat, to be resolute. So we've got to be more difficult to beat, which I think we've seen in the second half of the season. We have been. Um, I know it's arguable when you've lost, but I think we really have. I think we've, we've, we've adapted, particularly to the away games. Uh, and when we're at home, we always want to be on the front foot and attack teams. I mean, our goals for speaks for itself. What We scored 67 goals this season for a, for a below mid-table team at the moment. It's a great return. We've just got to tidy up, up the other end, which we were, we, we were loose with at times at the start. But look at all the changes that we've gone through. Um, They've done ever so well to, to to sort of be where we are right now, and we're only going to get stronger. And I, I hope people believe me when I say that because we will. We'll get stronger. We'll get better. Them games won't be one nil to the opponent. It'll be three one to us in the future because if we can keep the group of players together, they won't allow that to happen, and they'll they'll, they'll be better for these experiences. But this is how you learn, unfortunately, and, and learning's difficult at times. We've got a really good uh, record in terms of. Um coming back from uh, behind and right at the death a wonderful delivery from Eddie Jones and full credit to, to Harry Perrett for, for, for getting that it was a real brave header and we've seen him score them last season haven't we and I think Harry's one of them players who's been a little bit beaten up with his experience at Accrington Stanley probably hasn't been what he wanted it to be and again we have to sort of build them up get them back on the feet he knows he's had to be patient here with how the other lads have been playing and he showed his versatility I thought he did quite well today at centre back um, and as I said, we've seen him score them. That was the other reason why we were desperate to bring Harry back in, because we know he can be a threat in both boxes. And another day he scores and he's the hero, but unfortunately it wasn't meant to be today. So four games left in the uh, National League. We're in 13th position, set to improve on uh, last season, which is, is, is important. That's, that was the sole goal of the season, was to have a higher points tally than we did last season. 
and to go as far and as deep into the Cups as we could. If we can get to where I want us to be points-wise, it'll be a successful season. It won't feel that way at the end because you readdress your goals. We can all see how close we've been in so many games, like today, where we've dominated, not dominated the game, but we, we, we've imposed ourselves more on them than they have on us. We've created more chances than they have. They are the away team, um, so it should be that way, but it's not always the case. We've seen teams um, come, to play, well, come to us and, and be very, very strong. They like to dominate possession. We've imposed our game plan on them, but unfortunately they've suckered us with, with a moment of, of quality from an ex-player of ours, which is always difficult to take, but fair play to Marcus. Um, and I hope he does well, and I hope Gateshead go on and do well in all their endeavours. So they're a good team, they're well run. I like what they do. I like the management team. Um, I like the brand of football. And I think uh, today, as, as sick as I am of the result and, and standing in front of you saying it, as I've, as I've said a few times on this interview, it was a really good game to, to watch. I thought it was end to end. Both teams really going for it. A real good um, sort of advocate of the National League um, and two teams who were, and football clubs who were doing it right. And I think we'll go on to be fairly strong in this division moving forward. That's the thoughts of Altrincham manager Phil Parkinson after the Easter Monday 1-0 defeat against uh, Gateshead. Next up for the Robins, it's a trip down to uh, Surrey, our first visit to Dorking Wanderers on Saturday the uh, 15th of April.